Hey guys, what is up? Mikey Laker Talk. Let's talk Lakers basketball. All right, so in this video, what I want to do is go through each of our players, not all of them, uh, because realistically, I don't really expect some of these guys to actually improve or change their ways. But I'm going to go through many of our key players, key stars, our stars and role players, and talk about what I think they can improve on, what they should improve on, and what I hope they improve on in their game if they can do these things we will improve drastically and not have to make any drastic moves come trade deadline if some of these role players in particular can improve in these areas expect big movement come trade deadline over the next several months for us to shore up these areas into the regular season and on to the playoffs let's talk about these things but before we do as you all know, if you are in need of some fresh Lakers gear, check out the site, fanatics.com. I'm now partnered with them. Link is in the description. They have all the fresh hats, beanies, jerseys, classic jerseys, t-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts, headphones, anything you need Lakers related. They have the freshest stuff on the internet, fanatics.com. Check them out. Link is in the description. Let's get into it. All right, let's start off with Anthony Davis. Right off the bat, Let's, we're going to start off with our two superstars, Anthony Davis and LeBron James. For Anthony Davis, what he needs to improve on and what I hope he can improve on and what I think he should improve on is his overall leadership on the floor, being a more vocal leader on the floor. And what I mean by this, as you see in Anthony Davis, it looks like he's just kind of very quiet out there. He's letting his game do the work. And the guy is playing really well. He's an all-star. He has good numbers. He's one of the best players in the league. But he would take our team to the next level if he partnered up with LeBron James. Because LeBron James is actually doing this vocally on the floor. But if he partnered with LeBron James and was really vocal, like after a foul was called and they went to the line, you know how you kind of gather guys around the foul line and kind of talk about where, where they need to be what assignments they need to um, to get on and what things they missed and what we're going to do after this break. That's the stuff that would actually just propel our team to another level because he can do it. He's one of the best players in the league. He's a big man and he's well respected. Right now, it looks like he's just kind of quiet, just kind of going along the way and he's picking his spots and he's doing his thing. He's dunking on people. He's making some blocks. He's rebounding really well. But overall, he's not being a vocal leader. And I think he can be that player. And I wish he would be because I think guys would respond well to that. And the team would just get on his back. LeBron James respects him and actually, I, I would think, would encourage that to be the case. And LeBron James is always going to be vocal. So just having those two guys on the team would just really, I think, propel our team, our confidence to another level rather than him just taking a back seat and just kind of picking his spots here and there. So that's my thoughts with Anthony Davis. In addition, yes, should he get more involved in the pick and roll? Yes, but that's not his thing. That's more of a coach's thing. Would we love to see him play more pick and roll and pick and pop and things like that? Of course, right? Rather than just have him post up, you know, in a high post around three point line and go to work, put him in a pick and roll situation to get him more easier looks. We definitely want to see that. Next with LeBron James. Pretty much there's really nothing here to talk about. LeBron James is playing at an MVP level. He's playing out of this world. The one thing that LeBron James could do to really improve his, like to keep the defense guessing, is to get into his offense a little earlier. Now he plays at a really nice pace and everybody knows that he plays at a nice pace and he still picks teams apart. He gets guys in the, you know, he, he knows how to find guys. He knows where to take his shots. And he's really effective. And to my, in my opinion, he's right there at in the MVP race, as if not the head guy in the MVP race, because he's playing that well. But he would, I think, keep teams guessing if he at times got into his offense a little earlier. Like remind guys, oh, whoa, okay, Bron is trying to get buckets early. You know, like, and then he can switch it up here and there. Like if he did that, like when he got the ball, like took a quick step and tried to get to the rim or whatnot and maybe brought it back or got the ball and took some quick shots just to kind of get a rhythm going. Even if he missed a couple, a couple of those shots, I think he's so confident, so good. Some of those shots would go in and it'll get him into a nice rhythm early and at the same time, keep the defense guessing and kind of get our guys going, ooh, bronze into it. You know, and then he can scale back 
at times and play, you know, at a nice pace here and there. But I think getting into the offense when he gets the ball just a little bit sooner or if he's coming down, try to attack a little bit sooner, that would kind of keep things guessing. I think that's one thing that he could do to kind of change things up a little bit. Another thing for LeBron is I would say slow down on trying to dunk on people. I think LeBron James is playing at such a great pay, a great like momentum right now at an MVP level. He's about to be 35 next month. Hey, we don't need you dunking on guys and getting hurt and trying to do this, trying to do that. Keep, I would say, just kind of keep that down and let's get together with the squad to kind of get his minutes down because as somebody commented on last game, LeBron can't keep this pace up and we need him throughout this season into the playoffs and beyond. So that's what I would expect or want out of LeBron James. Moving on to JaVel McGee and Dwight Howard. These are one of the same. I think these guys are maxing out on their potential and I don't really expect them realistically to do anything more than what they're doing. For example, JaVel McGee has improved over his, I mean, his game over the last five or six years that it's like crazy. His physique is nice. He's more athletic. He's finishing in different areas around the rim. Realistically, you can't ask JaVale McGee to do much more. Could he become a better one-on-one -on -one defender against other bigs? Of course. But at this stage in his career, I don't think that's going to happen. JaVale McGee is great how he is. Same with Dwight Howard. He's overachieved in, in terms of what I thought he would bring to the squad. You can't ask him to score 20 points a game. Dwight Howard is doing his thing. I don't expect him to change. He and JaVale McGee are right there fulfilling their potential. I think they're both doing what is expected of them. Danny Green. Now, we don't want Danny Green to go 0 for whatever and score zero points in 27 minutes. We don't want him to score three points or four points. Outside of not scoring the basketball, we want him to be around that 12, 14 point range. He's pretty much doing his thing. He's playing the defense that we thought he would play. It's just that we would love to get him up around consistently around that 12 to 14 point mark, hitting more three pointers in here and there. Avery Bradley, he's also overachieving. I think in my opinion, we didn't expect him to be this much of a guy for us. Uh, we didn't even know he, if he would start. Now we're like, he's just balling out. So him consistently around that eight to nine to 10 point range and playing good defense, that's pretty much what we can ask of him. And we don't really expect him to do much more. Realistically, he's not going to be able to do anything much more than that. A few other players before we get to Kuzma and KCP and Caruso and Cook. A few other players that I think we want, we realistically, we're not going to get much more out of is Jared Dudley. We're not really going to get much more out of him. Also, Rondo, as much as he's a crucial guy on our squad, at this point in his career, he's not going to become a better defender and he's not going to become a shooter. So what else could you ask? out of Rondo, other than hoping that he knocks down a couple of those shots. And that's pretty much it. Because he's not going to be able to defend. He's not going to be this lights out shooter. So we would love for him to improve in those areas. But realistically, we're not going to get it. So moving on to Kuzma, KCP, Cook, and Caruso. All right, let's start off with KCP and Kuzma. For KCP and Kuzma, these guys have some similar things going on that if they improve in these areas, they will improve their game, I think, drastically and really help us in what they can bring to the team. And that is, they have this motor inside them that's playing, like that's going full speed, that every time they get the ball, they make reactions that I think limits their ability to make good reads and good decisions most of the time. These guys are very similar in that situation where they get the ball and they make a quick reaction to either pass the ball, make a play, or score the basketball. Now, they're similar in that when their shot's falling, you keep them on the floor, like we saw in the fourth quarter with KCP. And we saw that Kuzma's shot wasn't falling early, so he became a liability. Same thing with KCP. If his shots weren't falling, he would have been a liability for the most part. Now, I will say this. KCP's defensive technique and ability is a lot much more mature than Kuzma's. Like KCP actually can defend. The problem is he needs to slow that motor down. So for KCP, all he needs to do is slow down. Take it down a notch. 
if he takes it down a notch, what he's going to be able to do is you'll see that strong defensive stand actually become more effective and he's going to make better reads. So if he gets the ball and he's slow, he's going to slow down and take better shots or his shots will be more effective around the rim. Like his jump shots won't be airballing and things like that. He won't be airballing layups, you know, because he's reacting so fast, things slow down, those layups will start to fall. And he's actually a decent NBA player. He has decent skills. It's just that that motor over the last month or so, whatever, it, he wasn't like, he was like this, but he wasn't as bad as he is this year. It's just going, going, going. If he slows down, he'll become a much more effective player on both the defensive end, which we can utilize, and his offense will improve a little bit and get more consistent around that 10-point mark. Now, with Kuzma, as we're seeing, is that his shots now is falling, and so his confidence level is sky high. But what you got with him is also you got this motor that's running that really puts him in a situation where he makes bad decisions outside of scoring the basketball. But so if he slowed down his motor, if he just took it down a notch, not put pedal to the metal, you would see him like he doesn't have good defensive technique. But if he just slowed down and not really moved his feet and tried to jiggle and things like that and move side to side and just kind of stayed still steadily, quietly. Like if you think of like a D'Angelo Russell, D'Angelo Russell plays at such a soft, slow pace, even though he's not a great defender, you don't always call it out because he's not tweaking and stuff on the floor. So if Kuzma just slowed down, his defensive stance and presence would become a lot more effective, even though he doesn't have great defensive technique, it will still become a lot more effective. In addition, this will allow him to make better decisions outside of scoring, like with the ball, making slower pass or slower reads. You know, he's just not reacting and passing the ball and, and getting turnovers and things like that because turnovers is still high for a position for a player in his position that doesn't really handle the ball that much. So it's going to allow him to make better reads and play at a much higher IQ level outside of scoring. In addition, what he can do, because he has the height, he needs to be able to rebound more. So I would love to see him put a body on a guy and just kind of try to box guys out a little bit more rather than when the shot goes out, he's running to get that open look. If he did these things, his game would improve drastically and it would help our team out tremendously. So that's my thoughts on KCP and Kuzma. Now, leading on to lastly with Cook and Caruso. Quinn Cook, what he needs to do, because he has good skills, what he needs to do is improve his confidence in saying, hey, I'm a good guard, and he needs to improve his confidence in saying that I can handle the basketball and can control the team because I do have the ability and I need to just get my confidence back up. Because he has good ball handling skills, but the thing is, it looks like he's playing nervous, which forces him to do some bonehead plays and turnovers and things like that. But if he calmed down and he just played at a more confident level, his skills would come to the forefront. And same with Caruso. He's playing really at a high IQ level. He plays good defense and he does all these things. But what he needs to do is have more confidence in his offense ability. So if Caruso turned a notch just a little bit and actually put more confidence in that, hey, I can score and I am a threat to score because right now, it looks like his offense comes, you know, at the as a last resort. Like he doesn't want to do too much. If they leave him open, he's going to take a three. Or if they have a lane, he can drive and dunk on somebody. But for the most part, when he gets the ball, he's not really looking to score. I would say at this point in Caruso's, uh, you know, tenure, hey, put put some more action into your offense because that would just give him more confidence. He will start to flourish a little bit more on the offensive end and to give us another threat while he's out there. Anyway, so that's my thoughts on all these guys and what I think they should do, can do, and what I would love to see them improve on throughout the year. That would just make us more of a stacked team. And if our role players did this, we really wouldn't have to make any major moves come trade deadline. If they can't improve in these areas, I think we will have to make some moves to shore up some of these things. That's my thoughts. Hit me up in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for commenting, liking, subscribing. Let me know if you think I hit the mark on some of these. What's your thoughts on some of these players? As always, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at MikeSportsLA. We got Atlanta tonight. I'll hit you guys up after the game. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, and I'll catch you guys later on. Peace.